Joining us now, Fiona Hill. From 2017 to 2019, she served as Deputy Assistant to the President, Senior Director for European and Russian Affairs on the National Security Council, and her new book is There Is Nothing For You Here, Finding Opportunity in the 21st Century. Fiona, thanks. It's great to see you again. Uh, the President today is saying that 90 countries have signed the Global Methane Pledge that requires a 30 percent cut in methane emissions by 2030. But two of the methane emitters, Russia and China, have not signed the pledge, or not even in Scotland. Um, Putin, arguably because of his COVID issues back home, but how much can really be accomplished without Russia and China? Well, it's going to be very difficult. And, you know, I think the previous segment um, with Peter and Josh really laid out the problems that you have here um, on our side as well, um, and to people having confidence in the U.S. ability to lead. I think the real challenge would be to try to find, perhaps in the near term, a way of working with Russia on this. I mean, the United States and Russia are possibly the two largest uh, methane uh, emitters. A lot of it is associated gas from oil fields. So, in fact, I mean, this um, uh, exhortation to people to pump more oil will probably end up um, uh, increasing some of the emissions of uh, methane in the um, in the short term, for example. We've got a lot of natural seepage um, in Russia. Uh, as the permafrost out in uh, Siberia has started to melt, it was acting as a kind of capstone for natural gas uh, beneath the surface, and this is now coming up to the surface. The Russians are having these huge sinkholes appearing all over Siberia. They're having methane uh, basically seeping up through the seas in the Arctic as we're seeing warming. I think there could be a possibility here of the United States reaching out to the Russians. Obviously, Secretary Kerry has been shuttling backwards and forwards to Moscow, irrespective of all the other problems that we have in the relationship, and saying, look, maybe we can get some technical fixes for this. Maybe our industry and your industry, our governments can work together to find some way of capping these uh, joint uh, emissions, as the two of us are unfortunately the leaders in an area that we're actually trying to curb. And are you surprised, by the way, that the president apologized for former President Trump getting out of the Paris Accords? Everyone there knew that it was Trump who got out of the Paris Accords. Uh, it seemed a little strange for him to actually bring it up. <laughs> Well, I guess it was just um, acknowledging the elephant in the room, like you say here, um, literally. Um, but the problem, of course, is, as Peter was saying, uh, most of the uh, rest of the world is watching very closely to see what's happening. Even today, you, you have the whole segment on Election Day and what happens in Virginia, for example, in that very tight race. What's the um, the best prognosis for 2022 and who is going to hold the, the House of Representatives? And will Trump come back in 2024? I mean, we're talking about... Uh, basically curbing emissions, emissions by 2030. That's a long way out. And it's not very clear that the United States has this um, staying power. The other issue is that this is COP26. We've been having these kinds of climate meetings at the highest levels for 26 years now. This is the 26th you know, go-round, essentially, of uh, these kinds of meetings. And we just have not made sufficient progress. And without the United States really pushing uh, as well as cajoling and pulling everyone along as well, it's very clear that we're not going to make the steps forward that we need to. So the urgency is very much there. And I honestly, you know, like everyone else, really hope that uh, President Biden can get some traction in Glasgow. And, and what does success look like? What does getting traction and coming home successfully from this summit look like, do you think? Well, it's not just pocketing the agreements that he already has. I mean, there, there are commitments for deforestation and curbing that by 2030, as well as uh, the methane emissions by 2030. 2030, again, this is six, you know, years out, nine years out, so where are we? We're in uh, 2021. This is a long way to go yet. So what traction will look like is if he can pick up on the momentum and have a whole host of additional smaller meetings with counterparts. And again, getting an agreement with someone like the Russians uh, to actually do more on the score of methane in particular, that would be, that would really be success. Fiona Hill, an author, of course, of There Is Nothing Here For You. Thank you very much. Thanks for being with us.